Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. What a great week it's been. Had a fantastic time this week. The weather is starting to break for us. It's starting to get a little bit of cooler. I'm loving it. Uh, every day that the nights are in the 60s and the days are in, you know, not quite 90. So it's it's very nice. You know, I the heat when it's hot, I, I, I don't want to do anything, but it's beautiful out. So we got a couple things to do today. I got a project I have to take care of for my girlfriend, a, uh, a gnome. Uh, you know what a gnome is, right? I had a friend that was actually a gnome. He was, and he used to come to work, and they used to say, "Look, you can't dress like that. Uh, you know, uh, you get, you can't wear that hat, and you can't smoke a pipe on property." But he was a gnome, and nobody, he didn't care. So, uh, but I wonder what happened to him because you know he didn't last long at my company. Anyway, uh, let's get to work. We're going to paint that and uh, see what we got going on. Okay, today. next up we have a garden gnome. This is my girlfriend's garden gnome. It was in you know under a tree in her house for a long time, and you could see that the paint is all chipped off, and you know it's 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 pretty uh, it's worn. And uh, now here's the issue: when you're doing something like this, you want to do a, a quick repaint. Now you could do two different ways. If was indoors you could really take your time but outdoors it's just going to get beat up anyway so you just want to put a quick paint on there until the next time you have to do it because outdoor paint just doesn't last too long now you could do uh, a, a, an enamel paint is the proper way or something that can last outdoors but to get all these different colors we have a green we have a uh, blackish brown we have blue he looks like he has a dark green jacket on we have flesh colored we have some silver some red and red white and uh, blue for the eyes so there's a bunch of different colors to go out and buy that that in enamel paint would cost you a lot of money now i have a uh, a paint kit of uh acrylic paint and i'll show you what that looks like and now that, that's what we're going to hit it with now uh the the uh, best way to do it is to actually to uh scrub the whole thing down which i did to make sure there's no dirt or flaking or anything like that and then to prime it with some kind of primer paint but because we're going to try and match some of the colors we'll just go over it with the, a couple coats of the uh, acrylic now i'm going to use some i have some white acrylic uh paint that i'm going to go over and i'm just going to hit some of the white areas you can see here with a brush and you can see you're just going to fill in here we'll fill in the colored areas later on but to see here you see how this covers very nicely and you can always give it a second coat if you have to and you don't have to worry about putting it on too thick uh but you can see how that does a nice job in covering up and later on we'll get the flesh area but you can see what a difference just a, a quick coat of paint makes we're going to do this whole thing in different colors okay, you can see we spiffed up his hair a little bit with the white all the way around Always do the light colors first because it's easy to cover light with dark. It's hard to cover dark with light. So then uh, now, and we want to be able to hold this hat, you see, just to uh, to hold them a little bit. So now we'll mix up some different colors and do the rest. Now, here are my uh, acrylic paints that I've had for many years. You can buy these at any, I get them at Blick, but you can get them at any artist store. And uh, they're inexpensive, a couple dollars for a tube, and they go a really a long way. Now, you really only need three colors for most jobs. You need red, yellow, and blue. And uh, with red... Red, yellow, and blue. Here's red, here's yellow, and here's blue. With those three colors, you could make all your secondary colors. You know, your greens, your orange, your brown, everything like that. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this up here, mix this up. Now, when you mix up this paint, you see this paint, it's, it's almost like a... Uh, it, when it comes from the tube, it's pretty solid. And when you mix this up... You mix it up with uh, either another color, or if you want a gloss finish, you mix it up with this acrylic gloss medium. So you mix a little bit of this and a little bit of this, and you have a glossy. Otherwise, it'll come out flat, the green, when it's painted from here. But uh, we're going to use this, and we're going to finish uh, painting the rest of him where we can relax and do a now little bit of the beauty of these type of paints is because it's in a metal tube is as you squeeze it up, it also gets rid of any air in there. So these paints will last a long time. Now I've had these particular paints over 15 years and they're still as good as the day I bought them. That's the beauty of, you know, try that with a can paint. I don't care how big or small your can of paint is. It always dries out. And after a couple of years, it, uh, unless you have a, 
uh, some vintage paint like I have, they usually go bad, uh, harden up. So um, let me show you what, how you would use something like this. Uh, there are pros and cons to acrylic paints. Acrylic paints are very easy to clean up and to use. The cons is that they often don't have the durability of an oil-based paint. So let's uh, take a little bit here, and you could probably remember something like this if you ever watched the immortal Bob Ross. And uh, Bob Ross was a, a, you know, a television personality, an artist, and he was fantastic. And you can really learn a lot about mixing colors and paints from him. But um, here we're going to take some titanium white and we have some uh, Indo orange red. But this is basically an orange, you know. So uh, we'll take some titanium white and I'm going to try and make what's called a flesh colored, okay. And when you're dealing with flesh colored, flesh is always a little bit different because, you know, everybody has different tone flesh. And uh, for what we want to do for the uh, for that little statue, you know, we want it to look kind of cartoonish almost, but we want to pop out. So here we have our titanium white and you can see what this uh, what it looks like. You can always thin this out with water, but you'll see as you work it, you don't really have to. But we're going to mix in a little bit of orange here like this. And uh, what we'll do is remember... Uh, you don't need a lot of color, especially with white, to tint white. White always tints easy, but uh, that's your base. So here we, we put a little bit of orange here with the white. Now, as you're doing it, if you see you want it to be a little bit more pinkish or something, you would pull in a little bit more of the orange. But uh, you could see here we have a uh, kind of a pinkish, you know, we'll bring a little bit more in. Uh, and that'll make it a little bit more flesh tone, flesh colored, a little bit more. And uh, this is how you would do it. Now, uh, as you can see, we're getting very close to a nice color, a skin tone color, as you would call it, like a, almost like a pinkish. But if you wanted to make it a little bit weathered, you could put in here, we have a little burnt sienna, which is nothing more than a brown. Now, you're going to be very careful with the dark colors, like like your burnt siennas or your browns or your blacks or anything that's dark because that will tint your paint very quickly. So what you do is you bring a little bit of corner of that. You see, we don't have much and mix that in there and that'll darken it up very quickly, you know, and uh, then you could bring a little bit more. It's always easy to bring a little bit more in, but if you put too much in, your uh your SOL. So here we go. We have a nice, this is a pretty nice flesh color here. Uh, that will look good when it's painted. You can see what that looks like. I don't know how that f holds up, but, um, and then, you know, that's how you experiment. So you try it on there. Then you can always do a little bit more if you want to be a little bit darker, you know, to see that a little bit more orange. You can put, uh, put a little red in there, but this is how you get your color. So when you get something that you're happy with, that's your skin tone for, uh, for whatever you want to use it for. Next up, I got a quick story to tell about uh, about mixing those paints. And the reason I know that they're over 15 years old, those uh, paints, is because uh, 10 years ago, um, my neighbor who got me the job at the bus company, I used to work for the parks department before the bus company, and uh, he got me the job. And, and his wife uh, was responsible for, uh, you know, telling him to get the application for me. And I always appreciate it. So every Christmas since then, for 40 years now, I've been going over their house every Christmas and giving them a gift to thank them for, for getting me the job. And, uh, they're great people, and, and he just passed away a few years ago, but I still see the wife and the son, and, and we have a nice time over there every Christmas. But um, she liked cherubs. They're, these are these little angel figures and whatever, and uh, one time I came across this, uh, I guess it was kind of like a plaster of Paris, or it wasn't resin. It was some kind of a mix like that. It was a, a cherub, a, a little angel head. And I bought it for her, and I was looking at it, and I was like, you know, I would love to color this thing, you know. And <laughs> this is, this was rough because this was her Christmas gift, and it was getting close to Christmas. And I, if if I tried to paint it and it didn't come out right, I would have to toss the thing and come up with another gift. So I wound up painting it. I actually liked it. Now I don't know what you might think. You might like it plain white, whatever. But I painted it. She loved it. I did wind up changing the ribbon from a red to a gold. But other than that, uh, I painted it. And, and that's, you know, it, that's the way they looked. That's the way they were painted years ago, those cherubs. You know, that's the color. They were very kind of brightish colors. Anyway, 
Let me know what you think about that. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this garden gnome looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. You can see here we did it uh, from the top to the bottom. We did a uh, pretty nice job on him. He looks uh, <laughs> a lot better than he did before. Again, we didn't do a fill in any of the cracks or imperfections because the paint will do it itself. And you can see that the acrylic paint does a nice job, but it, it's not quite as durable. Now, if you want to leave this outside in the weather and stuff you could put a coat of uh, of a clear coat on there over this to help protect it but paint just doesn't last out outside too long and uh but you know the acrylic does go on a little bit easier makes it a lot easier to work with you could do the same exact thing with enamel but mixing the paints is a little more difficult but you can see what we did there we uh made his his uh jacket a little bit uh more of a foresty green i just like that color and uh the rest of it you know we kept the same colors that they had you know there and it is a an attractive little gnome i think he looks good we got the flesh color what i like and uh yeah i think this is going to be a nice little addition to the to my girlfriend's house so in closing i hope this helps out and i hope you try to match some paint or maybe try and paint something that might be around your house and i appreciate you tuning in hope you have a great day enjoy your weekend take care now bye-bye